Hello and welcome to the program, The Eagle. The Eagle is a weekly magazine program produced by the Academic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to inform and educate the public about the activities of the Commission. Section 6 of Section P of the EFCC Act vested in it powers to carry out and sustain rigorous public enlightenment campaign against economic and financial crimes within and outside Nigeria. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hello, Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Hello, viewers, and thank you for joining us again on the program. This program has been off air for some time now, and we have taken advantage of the break to repackage the program for your delight. We thank you for staying tuned. On the program today are reports on the arrest and trial of a Buruda change operator, Sali Uliman Mahmoud, who conspired with two others, Isaiah Friday and Isaiah Samuel, to defraud the Union Bank of Nigeria PLC the sum of 2.05 billion naira. Also today is a story on the conviction of Junior Williams, a notorious credit card scammer who was nabbed by the EFCC in Lagos. And on our special focus segment, the Eagle team had a chat with the pioneer chairman of the EFCC, Malin Horbado, where he bare his mind on the evolution of the commission, the EFCC, under his leadership, and how the commission survived many challenges to be where it is today. This and other reports will come your way after this break. Stay tuned. <music> CC will get you anywhere, anytime. As part of efforts at eradicating the country of all forms of economic and financial crimes, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, arrested two Baru the Shoinsh operators, Sali Uliman Mahmoud and Dan Asabi Ibrahim, alongside two University of Jaws undergraduates, Isaiah Friday and Azoya Samuel, over an alleged 2.05 billion naira fraud. The fraudsters, who specialize in breaking into the computer database of financial institutions in order to carry out dry postings of funds, were arrested in Lagos and Jos. They were picked up after the commission received a petition from Union Bank of Nigeria PLC Marina Lagos, sometimes in January 2013, alleging that a criminal attack had been launched on its database known as Flexcube by unknown criminals. The petition says the criminals had falsified the bank's record and account where they created unjustified huge opening balances to the tune of 2.05 billion naira in several accounts across the bank's branches and subsequently transferred funds from those accounts to several other accounts in other banks. Upon receiving the petition, the commission swung into action. Investigations revealed that Isaiah Friday who was carrying out computer system maintenance services for one of the Union Bank's branches in JOS on a part-time basis, paid way for the four stars to penetrate the bank's database. He was traced and arrested. His arrest led to the arrest of Azoya Samuel, another member of the fraud syndicate. Further investigations by the commission also led to the arrest of Sali Hulima Mahmoud, who is the mastermind of the fraud. It was revealed that Mahmoud with others now at large had approached Samuel if he knew anyone working with the Union Bank. Samuel gave Friday's contact and Friday was contacted. They told him they needed to the bank's database in order to carry out some postings and promised to give Friday 
the sum of 1.5 million naira if the deal succeeds. Friday agreed, and on the day the crime was committed, Samuel disguised as a colleague of Friday who had accompanied him to work in order to gain access to the bank's premises. They carried out the postings to six different company accounts, domiciled in Marina Lagos, branch of the bank. The syndicate thereafter went to the bank, withdrew all the funds, and Friday was paid as promised. The remaining balance was shared among the other syndicate members, with others now at large. Meanwhile, the EFCC has so far been able to recover the sum of $2,129,000 only, and another $134,000,000. Five hundred and forty two thousand seven hundred from the four stars. Other items recovered include furniture worth ten million from Sally Holiman's one bedroom apartment in Yaba, Lagos, four vehicles, landed properties in Kanu and Kaduna, and a four bedroom duplex worth forty five million in Lagos. The suspects have been charged to court. I am Thelma Ike reporting for the Eagle. Nigeria is the sixth largest producer of oil in the world. In over 50 years of oil exploration, the country has earned well over $600 billion as oil revenue. If properly managed, it should provide us with a health system that will save lives and not a decaying health system. A society where energy goes round for meaningful development and not an epileptic power supply system. A productive educational system and not a decaying educational system. A society where jobs are created for self-sustainability and not a society where our youth roam the streets unemployed. A highway of safety and security and not roads that lead us to early graves. We should have credible leaders who deliver dividends of democracy to the people and not corrupt leaders who divert our collective revenue for private use. Say no to corrupt leaders. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice O.A. Ikbari of the Lagos High Court sitting in Keja on Monday, November 11, 2013, sentenced one junior Williams, a Nigeria based in Italy, to seven months imprisonment on each of the six count charges he was arraigned for by the EFCC. The convict was arrested on May 17, 2013 at Four Points Sheraton Hotel, Lagos, following a complaint lodged by the hotel to the EFCC about his fraudulent card transactions. The hotel found out that Junior Williams made several transactions, including hotel reservations, with a stolen credit card before he was arrested. Williams, who was first arraigned on October 30, 2013, for offenses bordering on conspiracy to defraud, attempt to obtain credit and possession of documents containing false pretenses, had pleaded not guilty to the six-count charge preferred against him. But the convict, after being presented with undoubting evidence against him, applied to change his plea. A plea bargain agreement signed by the convict, his counsel, as well as the prosecuting counsel, Mr. Ben Ubi, paved way for his conviction. The Gombezona office of the commission has also secured the conviction of a notorious imposter, Mohammed Umar, also known as Terror. He was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment by Justice Yakub Gyang Dakwai of the Plateau State High Court Just for offenses bordering on conspiracy, obtaining money by false pretense and impersonation. Umar and one Mustafa Abdullahi, now at large, allegedly conspired between themselves in 2008 to obtain money from a special assistant to the Bauchi state governor by falsely pretending to be EFCC officials. I am Zainab Sani Ahmed, reporting for The Eagle. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Welcome back. Next is the special focus segment. On the segment today is an exclusive interview with Malam Nuorobadu, the pioneer chairman of the EFCC. Kamilo Gebi has the report.
There is no gain saying that Nuri Badu has become a household name not only in Nigeria but also in some parts of the world. The man whose efforts and contributions to the fight against economic and financial crimes in Nigeria succeeded in the list in Nigeria from the FATF list in 2006 has said he has no regrets working as the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The Eagle team had a chat with Tribadu, who disclosed that he was happy God gave him the chance to be a part of a process to rescue the country. When I was given the chance, uh, I thank God for that. And I, at that time, believe I was prepared for it. And uh, I saw it as an opportunity to continue to work and contribute for the development of our own country. I was excited and I, I, I considered it as a challenge and an opportunity. My belief then and of course even now is that sometimes, you know, challenges will just be an opportunity. And that was just that. I, I was very comfortable in the sense that I believe I was prepared for the challenge. And therefore, uh, it was okay. It was uh, fairly what I was expecting and I was very excited and I, I was very comfortable with it, very confident that I could do it or we could do it as a team. Uh, it came as a very, very pleasant surprise and I was happy that indeed uh, uh, I was the one that God gave chance. Starting up the commission, according to Ribadu, was as the commission had neither an office nor resources to commence operations. We had a very rough process before finally we ended up being uh, sworn in to start the work. And it was the board membership, I mean the chairman, the secretary and, and the other members of the, of the commission that were inaugurated by the attorney general. At the time of the inauguration, we didn't have anything. There was no budget, there was no office, there was nothing. I, I had that responsibility to start everything from the beginning, starting point. I, luckily for me and for all of us, of course, I was from coming from the Nigerian Police Force, and uh, the same kind of work that was going to uh, take place from the work that we were doing, and therefore to get the first initial set of people that would start was not too difficult. The commission started in a small office located inside the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE, which was given them by the former FCT minister, Nasil Erufai, who was at that time the director general of the BPE. Then, of course, there was no money. We then also looked for money, and still I went to the BPE to, get for, to ask for a loan until when we are able to source money from government. And we were given a loan of 100 million naira. And that 100 million naira was what we used for the entire uh, 2003. Uh, well, about seven months, eight months before we got money from, from, from federal government. And when we got the money, we paid uh, back the loan, and then we used part of the money that we got also by uh, the headquarters, the EFCC office now, where, where the headquarters is, it was the money that we got from government first, I think it was about 250 million. We used about 118 million to buy the property. Soon after it started, the commission began a massive clampdown on economic and financial crime offenders. How was the commission able to achieve that? We started, for example, with the 419 people. Uh, everybody knew them in Nigeria. They were out there. They were being celebrated. But nobody could do anything about them. The cases were there. We were from the Nigerian police force. We knew that those cases were there simply because, I mean, they, they were never brought to justice. Because those who are given the responsibility were also part of it. Either taking money or not doing their own work. We decided to take action immediately. The first week after our inauguration, we rounded up most of them. I still remember some of the individuals. And some of them, I don't know whether you people might not know now, but they were very popular names. People like Ade Bendel, Fred Ajudua, Cosmas, Emmanuel Ude, uh, Maurice Ibekwe. There are so many of them. So uh, we had an operation. We, we, we rounded up all of them. 
In two weeks' time, we took every single 419 Froster that was then around and doing what they like, and we brought them to justice. There were allegations from some quarters, however, that the EFCC under the leadership of Ribadu did not work in conformity with the rule of law. What is Ribadu's reaction to these allegations? When someone comes to do what is right, he is the one who is an abnormal person. And that is why continuously we continue to ask them and challenge them. Bring out one single thing that we did that was not according to the law. I'm still waiting. I stood before Nigerian Bar Association several times and asked them, come, come and tell me one single thing that the EFCC did that was not according to the law. Nigerians were not used to following the law then. Nigerians were not used to convicting 419 frosters. Nigerians were not used to convicting public servants who are stealing. We came and we did that. And therefore we became those who are not following the law. Ribadu added that Nigeria at that time was used to doing the wrong things, which was the reason why the country was not achieving much in terms of development. For those who allege that the EFCC under Ribadu didn't respect the law, Ribadu had this to say. You will never get results if you do not go by the law. The reason why we never got results in Nigeria was simply because we were not following the law. No way, no magic that you can ever get law. And people saw it after we left, when the EFCC decided not to be following the law, and they never got results. The retired Assistant Inspector General of Police, AIG, further pronounced that if anyone has a proof about any case prosecuted during his tenure where the law was not followed, such proof should be presented before him. I have asked 101 million times, come and tell me one single case that we did not follow the law. I'm still waiting. You know, you said it's a perception. You said that people are... Can you mention one single instance where we, EFCC, especially from 2003 to 2007, that we did not follow a law or the law? I'm waiting for anybody to tell me that. According to him, Nigeria, before the advent of the EFCC, was rated high in corruption by Transparency International and listed among FATF's non-cooperative countries and territories, NCCT. But with the efforts of the EFCC under him, the country's international image and ratings suddenly began to change. There's nothing you can do on earth to convince the FBI, to convince the Metropolitan Police to work with you other than to do what is right and do it properly and do it correctly. I used to be very, very excited when I see them standing up and acknowledging the work that was taking place in Abuja. Nigeria and Africa. We were the first organization then that the Attorney General of the United States came out publicly to acknowledge and thank us for the work that we were doing. We were the first in the world, and indeed particularly Africa, that the Metropolitan Police could invest millions and millions of pounds into the work we were doing. Almost all the important cases that took place in the world, cases of corruption emanated from us whether you call it Halliburton, Siemens, Panalpina, almost all of them, we started it. We were the ones that were doing the investigation. When other international organizations, like the Justice Department of the U.S., will take over and continue with the work we are doing. Achieving such milestones as an anti-corruption czar did not come without a lot of challenges. What were the challenges? And corruption fought back at a point, but thank God EFCC survived it. We are getting back. It is going to be a slow process. But today, every day you open a newspaper, you see the name of EFCC coming up. And there's an indication that something is happening. Uh, it was, we had a very difficult period. Or you people, had, or the EFCC had some downturn and very sorry period. Uh, but you cannot fight corruption without being fought back, without attempting to reverse it without uh, any uh, way of stopping and, and, and destroying the work. In 2007, we saw it happen. The intention was to destroy EFCC. The intention was to destroy everything. And they succeeded to some extent. They messed up these records. They, 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 they literally threw out every good officer that was doing the work then. They, they turned the place into a corruption outfit and they messed up the name of the organization. And it ended up, it lost confidence and trust of the people. It suffered. And even the work that was ongoing, 
literally retrogressed and went back. We started losing everything, including cases in court, including public confidence, including international community support. But thank God, in the last one year or so, EFCC is getting back on track. And that is the truth. Part of these challenges, Rubadu said, were the treatments meted on him at the very inception of the late Umaru Musaira was 10 years Nigeria's president and the alleged James Ibori, a former governor in the oil-rich Delta States saga. But Rubadu said he never took anything that happened at that time personal. James didn't handle his own affairs smartly and he ended up paying dearly for it. There are smarter crooks than James who did more damage to the EFCC. But God will judge them also. One day, one day, they will be exposed. James is serving jail time in the UK. Uh, well, yes, he might have said all those things. And for me personally, I have not taken it to, I mean, I've never taken it to anything. Serious. All my life, I fought bad people. I fought bad guys. I fought armed robbers. I fought gangsters. I fought 419 people. And I'm so used to it. It's okay. I've never taken anything that James, James ever said serious. Wow. I was very focused because it was not personal. The work I was doing was what was expected of me, to bring people that have done wrong to justice. And it was not different from all others. And this type of work, you will not just be left alone they will fight back. I've seen a lot of uh, fighting back all my life. And James Owen, to be honest, probably may not be even as bad as the others. His own was very public, that's why. But there are others who are worse than him. But maybe it's not public. Those who attempted to even kill me are not James, not James. Others did. So, but this is the type of work that when you are doing it, you will expect a thing like this. You will, if you are going to do it very well, uh, you will be fought back. And what matters is for you to not to take it very personal, not to allow it to wear you down or slow you or change you or make you lose hope and uh, confidence. I, I didn't, maybe if I meet James today, I will sh hug him and I will shake his hand, like so many others that I'm doing daily now, because it was never personal. One of the very first cases prosecuted by Ribadu and his team at the EFCC was that of Tafaba Logu, a former Inspector General of Nigerian Police. Being Ribado's superior officer in the police force and a serving inspector general of police at that time, wasn't Ribado scared of going after the ex-police chief? When you want to do things honestly, you are blind to the position of individuals. Justice is blind. If you see the sign of justice, they always put something and go. And that's what it's supposed to be and that's what it should be. So, uh, and, uh, what do you call him? Uh, Tafa Balugu, yes, he was my inspector general of police. I was a police officer. And it's not that I had anything personal with him, but it happened that, you know, he, he crossed the line. He did something that was wrong, and it was uh, brought to our own uh, attention, and we investigated. And we, 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 we treated him like all other uh, people who were investigating. No difference, no any... Uh, and. To be honest, well, I, I thank God. Only one, go, one fear I have, and that is fear of God. Not fear of individual. No. No. Was it true that the EFCC under your watch was used as a weapon against former President Olusegun Obasanjo's opponents? Obasanjo never made any special law for EFCC. The people we brought to justice are the closest people to him. Those we brought to justice are PDP, his own party people. But others will turn it upside down and lie and say this. Oh, oh you, I which so, so hand? Yes. And they say, <laughs> oh, we which hand? Oh, uh, attack dog. Yes, attack. Simply because some crooks knew that you know the work we were doing was going to get them yes. okay. and get to them. Yes. 
And that therefore, they spend, because they are so rich and they are powerful, they use the resources, they use their connections, they use their own, everything that they had to confuse Nigerians and deceive and lie. They continue with the bad things they were doing. Asked if he has any regrets working for the commission, Ribadu said the only time he regretted anything was when he and his family were humiliated during his passing out parade at the Nigeria Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, Kuru in Just Plateau State, where his certificate was withheld. I have no regret at all. And because it was the right thing, it was okay. But who am I? Well, if you say that you are going to fight corruption, if you are going to go after powerful individuals, if you will take millions and millions of dollars from people, if you will take them, take them away from public office, where they are enjoying, where they are kings, where they are doing what they like, and put them in prison, or if deny them the chance to continue that. And when they fought back, and then they stop to, they, 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 they don't want to give you a certificate, it's a joke compared to what you have done to them. It's nothing. What is a certificate? I, I didn't at all. Though it was a little bit, um, because my family was there, my children were there, it's okay. I mean, but I'm strong. I'm a tough person. I, I, I take things. I would take far, far more than that. And I don't think anything can even shake me in a way that, no. Despite all the odds, President Goodluck Jonathan, who was a vice president to the late Heradwa at the time of Ribadu's graduation from NIPS, ordered that his withheld certificate be issued to him. And in May 2010, the president also reinstated Ribadu's rank as an assistant inspector general of police, AIG, before retiring him on the same rank. Hmm, Aisha, that was touching. Exactly. Well, with that, we wrap it up on today's edition of the program. We thank you for your continued support, and we hope you will stay tuned on our next edition. From me, it's bye-bye, and God bless Nigeria. Aisha? Yes, Aisha. The EMCC will stop at nothing to ensure a corrupt-free society for you and I. Thanks for watching, and have a very good evening. Bye-bye.